Hey guys, if you are a baker or treat maker, I've got a question for you. How often are you making treats or sweets for your friends and family? And a question I get often is, what kind of discount should you be offering friends or family? Well, the truth is most people don't even take the time to break down the cost of what their recipe is actually costing their business, let alone properly factoring in profit, which is the key to being able to give a discount. So I'm gonna break that down for you in this video because it happens to be my brother-in-law's birthday and I'm gonna make him a cake from scratch. I'm gonna walk you through the entire recipe, show you how much it cost me to the penny. So you can see a breakdown of that right here. And then because you keep asking and you wanna know, well, how much would you charge for utilities or labor? I'm gonna factor all that into this cake. So you can see how much it really costs when you sign up to bring the cake or give a cake to a friend or a family member. Let's do that. In the previous video, I showed you how we took this one Generate chocolate recipe and we went and shopped for ingredients at Walmart and then Costco and then a wholesale place like Baker's Bodega. Definitely go check those videos out if you missed that. In this video, we're gonna be using the prices of Walmart and I'm gonna break down all the ingredients and everything that it costs, but we're gonna actually make this cake from scratch and we're gonna do it together. So here I'm mixing in all of my ingredients. We're gonna start with the batter. Obviously, once we put that in the oven, we can move on to make the ganache and the buttercream and then gather everything that we need to decorate this cake. For all of these cake ingredients, it cost us $12.85. You can see a breakdown of that right here. Moving on. Let's make the filling. So people have always loved the Cake Mama's banana Nutella recipe, and it's got a banana mousse in it, and I'll be honest with you, at first we started making it with fresh whipped cream, we stabilized it, we did all the things, but then another bakery introduced me to a product called Frost and Pride. It's dairy free and it whips up really thick and also stays really stiff. And so that is a key ingredient for the banana mousse that we used at the Cake Mamas. Don't tell anybody. So we're making the frosting right now and the total for the frosting, the Nutella, and the banana comes out to $2.90. So let's talk about this chocolate frosting recipe. For the ingredients on this buttercream recipe, including the ingredients we used to make the ganache, the total price for this comes out to $11.46. So we're gonna write that in on our cake cost breakdown sheet under the frosting ingredient category. So moving on to paper and packaging. In the previous video when I was shopping at Baker's Bodega, I showed you how not all cake boards are created equal. I like to use a drum instead of just a wraparound or a regular cake cardboard, so you should look into that. This cake board costs $2.59, and yes, it's a lot more expensive than a standard cardboard, but it also looks nice. So if you choose the nicer things, be sure to factor them into the cost. We also found these really cute cake slice containers, and I wound up slicing up the cake later on after we sang happy birthday, sending them home with a bunch of the slices. So just for the sake of this, I'm gonna add the six dollars that it cost me for the five cake containers which gives me six dollars for the cake containers two dollars and 59 cents for the cake board seven cents for the parchment paper that i baked the cake in which is a total of eight dollars and 66 cents for paper goods this is also where you would add a box or ribbon or anything that you did for packaging put it in this category now let's talk decorating supplies. We can all get carried away, especially if you're a true artist at heart, by throwing on all the edible glitter or the 24 karat gold plated whatever. But in this video, again, we're breaking down everything. So I wanna show you how we're gonna do that here. But you need to be in the habit of making sure that everything that you put on your cake or any of your products is also factored into the cost of your goods. 
This teal ganache that we made cost $6.12. The thing is, is I put it in this bottle and it was so much, I could make literally seven cakes from this one recipe of ganache. So that's gonna come down to only 85 cents for the three ounces that I used for this cake. Also in the last video, remember I showed you how to break down the price of your sprinkles. You should always be weighing the cake before and after. And these sprinkles cost $3.99 for 11 ounces. We only used three ounces, which means we should factor in 73 cents. Also, these giant Oreos, I really love them. I wound up using them for the top of the cake. Remember, they came out to 30 cents each, which is a lot. I used five of them, so we're adding another $1.50. This topper that you see me putting on is not the actual one that I ordered. I didn't pick it up till later, but for the sake of this video, I put this one on. The topper I ordered custom from a friend and it was $20. You might be watching this saying, oh, I can make that for way cheaper. I've got paper at home. That's fine, but a standard topper, if you are a busy entrepreneur and you don't have time to make it, you've gotta buy it or outsource it from somewhere. This topper cost $20, so we're factoring in the full $20. So the total for decorating supplies is $23.08. We're gonna add that onto our cake cost breakdown sheet in the category of decorating supplies, $23.08. Okay, let's talk cleaning supplies. Lots of you use an entire roll of paper towels when you're cleaning your kitchen. Definitely using stuff like dish soap or dishwashing detergent, all of those things because cleanup takes a long time and it's a lot of work. They add up over time, they add up over the years. So we've gotta factor that into every cake. For this, I'm just gonna add in a solid $5 to cover my cleaning supplies. This is important. At the Cake Mamas, we paid for a towel service. The towel service was like $300 a month, but let me tell you, it was one of the best investments we ever made. I wasn't having to worry about how many towels we were using or lugging them home every day to wash them in my home washing machine with all my family's clothes. So something like that is, you know, just to teach you the importance of making sure you're factoring in the cost of all your cleaning supplies or cleaning services. All right, let's talk equipment. I know that this can be complicated for some of you and the reality is, is everyone's equipment costs are gonna be totally different. Let's just say that you have somehow racked up $5,000 of ovens and mixers and just different things that you consider to be equipment for your business. You're going to then estimate how many customers you're gonna be helping in a year. So let's just say that you plan on helping 300 customers in a year. You're then gonna multiply the 300 customers in a year by three years. That gives you 900 customers. So if you've got a total equipment investment of $5,000, you're gonna divide that by 900 customers, and that's a really good percentage or number that you can kind of attach to every single customer that you do business with for the next three years. That's gonna cover the cost of your equipment because trust me, you gotta pay back that cost. And you're also gonna wanna start saving money because eventually the oven or the mixer or whatever it is is going to break, and this is exactly how you factor that in into running your business and then always being able to fix or repair or replace your equipment. So for this example, I only used my oven, my mixer and my dishwasher and a portion of my kitchen. So I'm gonna add in $5.50 for this example. Now let's talk utilities. These are your variable costs. These are things that are not the same every single month, your gas, your water, your electricity, maybe your internet bill, um, different things like that. Everybody's is going to be different. Why? Maybe you rent a kitchen by the hour and so your overhead needs to be factored in to whatever that hourly price is. Maybe you use a portion of your home kitchen as your business or bakery kitchen. All of those things are gonna determine the price of your utilities. So it's really important for you to figure out what percentage of the kitchen are you using? What percentage of the time are you using that kitchen for your business? Your tax professional should be able to give you some advice on this, but for the sake of this example, we are factoring in $5 for the use of my gas, the gas that I spent you know, getting to the store, and then just the electricity and the air conditioning and a portion of the kitchen that we used for an hour and a half, $5 is reasonable because I'm baking from home. Again, your number will be different. Now let's talk about labor. This is where you would factor in all of the time you spent corresponding with a customer or making your shopping list, going to the store, you know, shopping, baking, mixing, 
filling, frosting, decorating, this is where all of that labor gets added up. So I'll give you a breakdown of how I figured that out for myself. Also, it's very controversial when you ask someone like, well, how much do you pay yourself? Some people have been doing this for 15 years. Some people are just starting. Some people are trained culinary professionals. So you have to decide what works for you. Some people think because they can do something really fast, they shouldn't charge the customer very much, but it's actually quite the opposite. If you've been doing this like I have for 12 years, then you should command more, not charge less because you're faster or better or more experienced. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to factoring in the labor. But for this example, I'm gonna be paying myself $20 an hour and that is fine by me. You might wanna pay yourself $120 an hour and that's fine by you. You pick whatever feels comfortable for you. But one thing that I wanna note is, let's say that you live in a city or state or country and the minimum wage is $15 an hour. Don't just take $15 an hour and use that as your labor cost because as an employer, you've gotta factor in things like workers' comp insurance or whatever other benefits you offer your employees, all of those things should be factored in. So just as a rule of thumb, if they made $15 an hour, but you also pay workers' comp and they have some sort of benefits, I would just round it up to $20 an hour just to cover your labor and make sure you're not in the red. So it took me 30 minutes to drive to the store, shop for these ingredients, and then it took an hour and a half for me to mix, bake, assemble, and decorate this cake. That's a total of two hours. So if I made $20 per hour, that comes out to $40 in labor. So let's go ahead and add that onto the sheet here. Now, this gives us a total cost of $114.45. If you stopped there and you thought, yeah, that sounds reasonable, I would charge $115 for this cake. That's great, that seems fair and reasonable to me. Then congratulations, you have officially made yourself a hobbyist or a nonprofit organization because there is no profit factored into $115. We have to add that in now. This is where bakery owners usually fall short. They do a good job of maybe calculating their costs and then they forget that in order for a business to actually be profitable, you've gotta factor in profitability. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. Okay, so this is the cost analysis worksheet. We're gonna start by entering the total cost of this cake, which again included all the labor and everything that went into making this cake. That's $114.45. If you move over to the next column, you'll see that it says 95% markup. Now, this markup percentage is super important because so often I hear bakery owners say like, oh yeah, I make 50% profit on all of my baked goods. And marking your stuff up by 50% is not going to give you a 50% profit percentage. And so this is the importance of why these two numbers are so different. This is giving us an example of if we mark it up by 95%, the markup becomes $108.73, which means that our selling price becomes $233.18. What you need to know is that if your business sold this cake for $223.18, your business would not only be able to pay you, cover all the ingredients of everything that was required to make this cake, but it would also put $108 in the bank which is pure profit for your business. This is how you run a business. By the way, this cake serves 25 people. So to spend $223 on a cake to serve 25 people is not unreasonable. So please stop shortchanging yourself. Let's do a different example. Let's say you're saying like, oh Janelle, I can't possibly mark it up by 95%, that's highway robbery. Okay, great, I'm glad that you don't wanna do it that much. Let's go with your number. In the second column, we're going to change the markup percentage to 50%, so we are adding $57.23 to mark it up. That gives us a total selling price of $171.68. So you spent two hours making this cake and your business only made $57. You have to ask yourself, does that feel good to me? Is that enough? Is that worth my time? How fast can I get to my goal and grow my business if I'm only making $57 on this one order? And this is where people go wrong. They think that by selling the cake for $171, their business made $171. $71, but you didn't. You only made $57 because it cost you 
$13 to actually make the cake. I hope you're following along because this is super informative information that you need in order to be successful in your business. Let's say you're still fighting me and you're like, well, I can't mark something up by 50%. Remember, we're only talking about marking it up. We're not talking about the profit. So if we marked it up only by 25%, you'd be adding $28.61 to your business's bank account. I don't know about you, but an investment of two hours of my time is not really worthy of $28. I can't make a ton of money. I can't grow or expand my business. I can't hire a lot of people at that rate. And you might also be thinking, well, what's the going rate for markup? I'm gonna tell you that the going rate for markup is between 90 to 100% because we're trying to get to a 50 to 65% gross margin profit percentage. So let me show you that column over here. The gross margin profit percentage, if I mark it up by 95%, puts us at 49%. I'm telling you this first line is the sweet spot and that's where you wanna be or at least get as close to it as possible. Oh, it's so hot. The sun is like literally beaming down on me. People like to say all of the time that they give their friends and family 30% off. Well, if you factored the cost of your cake, which in this case was 114, and you gave somebody 30% off of that, you would be in the hole and it would cost you a lot of money. So if I'm making a cake for a friend or family member, the first thing I'm gonna do is always cover the cost of my goods. Obviously, if it's my sister or someone like my brother-in-law, I'm not gonna charge them if they ask me to make a cake, but I do want them to know how much those ingredients cost my business because if they don't know, then you can't be upset with them for like disrespecting your money. You've gotta respect it in the first place. So usually when people ask me for a discount, the first thing I'm gonna do is calculate it down to the penny, including my labor and all of the costs that I'm going to incur to make that cake or treats. And then I'm gonna tell them how much that it is. I'm gonna tell them how much it should be if I were to sell it. And then I'm going to discount it to just allow them to maybe cover the cost or give me a little bit extra. But the point of this video is that if you are doing something for friends and family, that's great. You still gotta be responsible for the math in your business, right? So here's my brother, we're singing happy birthday. We had a great time. He doesn't know that this cake cost me $114 to make. That's okay because it's my gift to him, right? But if he then said, hey sis, that cake was so good. Can you do me a favor and make that cake for my cousin's birthday next week? I'd say no problem, it's gonna be $115 just to cover the cost of the ingredients and then if you could kick me down an extra $50 just to make sure that I can tip my decorators or whatever it is, that would be great. So that means I would be really charging him $165. I still made $50, maybe I could waive that, it's up to you. It's your family, your friends, and most importantly, your time. So I hope this video was helpful. I know that math can be a little confusing, but I wanna encourage you. If you took your skill of baking or making something and now you are creating products to sell, you've gotta be responsible for how much is coming out of your business, how much time you're investing, and ultimately how much profitability your business is capable of making or how much profit you're actually robbing from the business. And if you know someone that can benefit from this, please share it with them. I am really on a mission to make sure that the baking industry figures out a way to embrace the math that's required to generate profitability so that way you can keep your business running, it can be sustainable, but most importantly, it can grow and bring you the fulfillment that you deserve. So if you love this video and you liked it, please subscribe. If you know someone that can benefit from it, please share it with them and I will see you guys in the next video, bye.